Debbie Birch, and I'm with the Queen Anne's County Office of Tourism, and we're here today to talk about an upcoming event. It's um, November 14th. It's the Harvest Breakfast, and it's put on by the University of Maryland ex uh, Extension, Queen Anne's County. And I have Jenny Rhodes here, and she's going to tell us about the event, and it's been going on for... 25 years. Holy moly. Okay, I knew it had been a while, <laughs> as long as I had been before me. Um, so that's awesome. And so tell us... What is this Harvest Breakfast? Well, Harvest Breakfast was a real, originally started by Paul Gunther, who was a county ag agent before, before my time. And the idea was to celebrate the harvest. So okay. while on November 14th, we may not be done quite the harvest, <laughs> but we're going to come together to celebrate the harvest. Maybe all, probably all corn will be picked, but we'll still be cutting okay. some soybeans uh, by then. So just to bring the ag community and uh, the business community together. And my job is to bring some topic um, to the Harvest Breakfast that educates the business community. Okay. So we work with the Chamber of Commerce. So okay. we work with um, Linda Friday, and then she sends it out to all the chamber members. So it's it's just fun. It's it's interesting to see the people um, come together, and why we you know we all live in the county together, right. but sometimes we just don't know what each each other does. So I always tell my farmers, I said, you need to go out and meet somebody new. Find right. some business because in their business, it's just like your business, but and you have the same, all the same problems and maybe the same same good things. So. And, and you never know who they're going to talk to. And I think that's interesting. I've been to the breakfast a couple times and the people that you see there, because you, you know, you think, okay, it's put on by the the extension office, and oh, it's going to be all farmers, mm -hmm. and then it's not right. because the chamber's involved. Yeah. So it's all these business people right. too, and to see the mix yes. between them is right. incredible. Right. So anybody in the community is invited to come. The more people that come, the better. Uh, breakfast is um, fixed by some local farmers. Okay. Um, they don't want me to say their names, so I said, okay, <laughs> I won't say because I, I have a whole list that, that comes every year, but they donate um, all their time, and it's just fun for people to come out. You know, we make, we fix scrapple, and we have sausage, and we have chipped beef, and we do have fruit, so we have some some good things. Um, <laughs> but it's just fun. I think it's um, it's a breakfast that not everybody eats a whole lot, and it, right. it's just um, it's a real farmer's breakfast, I guess, if you want to call it, that. And it's early. It starts at right. 645? 645. Is Actually, the We'll be there at 5.30 starting okay. to cook, but um, usually people start roll, rolling in around 6.30. And, and the idea is for everybody to get some time to talk and get coffee and, you know, just chat. There might be a few little booths set up. That's what I was going to ask. Mm -hmm. Are there any, you know, can people get information there mm -hmm. while they're there about different programs mm -hmm. that you all right. offer or yes. anything yeah, else? We'll, we'll have usually a table set up about that. Okay. Um, so there'll be uh, information about that. Now, last year we started uh, something new. In lieu of paying to come or making a donation, uh, we started bring a canned good or non-perishable item. It went over well. We were very excited about that. To bring a truck in to yeah, pick so, up all the yeah, canned so we goods. Did, yeah, so we did. So we um, selected, I didn't realize how many food pantries there were in the county, and there is a lot. So last year we did um, the Centerville United Methodist Food Pantry. We did the Sellersville Charge Food Pantry and the Mother of Sorrows, and then, of course, the Queens County um, Social Service nice. Department helped us, you know, figure out, right. you know, the needs of, what people wanted. And then if people forgot to bring a, per a non-perishable item, they just made a cash donation and then we distributed that among those. So it worked very well. We were very pleased with that. So that, so we'll celebrate the harvest and then we'll also give back. Right. And then you always have a speaker there, right. somebody to talk to the group yes. about a topic that's yes. important to everyone. Who's yes. the speaker this year? Well, so this year uh, we will ha I'll have two gentlemen there. I'll have um, Dr. Dan Kugler will be there. He's an associate dean for special programs with the University of Maryland Extension. And then Paul Goringer, uh, who is an extension legal specialist. Oh, okay. And Paul grew up on a farm and went to school and to become a lawyer and now has come to Maryland to help us um, with legal aspects of extension. There is not a day that goes by that I don't get some call about um, land leasing or some right. problem on some farm. So it's really nice that we have, um, part of my job is to have I can't be a, I can't know everything. Right. So we have the resources. Right. So we and, have the resources. Right. So we have specialists in different sectors. You know, we have an insect specialist, we have a weed specialist, and okay. now we have a legal specialist. So it's it's really gonna be fun. So we're gonna talk about kind of what happened with the Hudson case. Mm -hmm. We all we all know, you know, when the uh, water keeper sued a local farm uh, family and Purdue. Um, 
And then, you know, our county came together. We raised $110,000 here just in this county to support um, the Hudson case. So, like my mom says, out of something bad always comes Something's something good. Right. So what good came out of that is the legislature in Maryland gave $300,000 to start what's called an, um, let me make sure I get this right, Ag Law Education Initiative. Oh, okay. So they're so, going to yeah, go so, out and, and have education right. for agriculture. For I don't want to say farmers because sometimes it's not just the farmer. Right. It might be the That's other right. businesses yeah. that right. deal Land with that. Landowners, right. you know, all, all those uh, people. So they have started this um, initiative with the three hundred thousand dollars initial. Initially, they gave another some more money. So we're we're going to hopefully to keep this rolling. And what it does, so it farmers there's a, a hotline that they can call. Okay. And it gives them resources and information where to go and get things. Oh, excellent. And so Paul is writing fact sheets about estate planning. We've had. Uh, the new farm bill is um, has been passed, so farmers have to make decisions on that. So we're helping to educate Paul's to going around. We've been to all different places in the oh, state. Um, leasing issues. I mean, there's all kinds right. of issues out there. So it's been a great resource for us. Oh, it that's really going to be great having him there. It will. Um, and, of course, I, I'm going to jump to something else. Okay. I, I know the extension has an anniversary. Yes. We need to, so this is sort of a double celebration, yes. even though it's not for another month of breakfast, but right. Right. the yeah. anniversary. Right. So it's the 100th year uh, anniversary of extension. The Smith-Lever Act um, was passed in 1914. So our job was really to make sure that the agriculture sector was being educated. A lot of people were going to high dollar colleges, but there really wasn't that the land grant um, system was put into place to, and it was actually for um, agriculture and uh, marine is marine? Kind, okay. kind of like when it started. <laughs> so, but our, our- We have both here. Yeah, so. that's right. Yeah, so we, we've got it all covered because my job as extension educator is ag and natural resources. Okay. So we kind of um, cover everything. But we had um, a can our first county ag agent traveled around the county on an Indian motorcycle. Get out of here. Yeah. You don't have the motorcycle anymore. Uh, no, I don't do you? have the motorcycle. No. <laughs> we wish. No, no but <laughs> we have big money. Yeah, but we have all the archive documents oh, of you know how so they funny. how they started. So when they first started, they're and what we still do today is take the research that's done at the university and then get that out to the farmers uh -huh. to help them in, you know, improve um, yields and uh, increase profitability. So when he first went out, people were like, mm, adults were like, no, I'm not I don't know about that. But what happened is he started working with the young young children. Okay. So they planted it with plant a plot of corn and here's some new genetic um, seed corn, try it. So then when you know the older generation saw, hmm, maybe these right. maybe it, this is, it working. is working. Yeah. So and then, you know, of course we have four H, we have the youth development, we have family consumer science. So uh, we offer a lot of, and our our niche is that we offer uh, unbiased research-based education. We don't have anything to gain from any of right. the information. I'm not right. selling anything. Right. That's always nice. Yeah. So, so wonderful. Well, so come out to the Harvest Breakfast. Right. It's November 14th. Mm -hmm. We have contact information on the screen. Um, people need to RSVP yes. that they're coming. Yes, they do need to register. 410-758-0166. Uh, Just call our office. We usually plan for around 200, but and we want to make sure that we have enough food for everyone. <laughs> I'm sure we will. We yeah. have never run out yet. Oh, well, you never know. <laughs> so, well, thank you so much You're for welcome. coming in, Jenny, thank and I hope it turns out well that day. I'm sure it will. Thanks. Thank you.